Ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Tonight we're going to talk about Kotlin, Kato, and how to get the query variables and how to get the path variables in an easy way. We're going to use something called location, but first we are going to get these uh, the path variables and also the query uh, parameters. We're going to get that uh, the, the old fashioned way where we are uh, accessing the call and then getting the yeah, all the variables there. But then after we've done that, then we're going to use uh, use the locations, which is a module. It's a feature that we can, it's not a module, it's a feature that we can install uh, by adding this line right here. Uh, first of all, I'm going to tell you how I created this project. I, first of all, I needed the, in, in IntelliJ, I needed the, the KTOR plugin. So we need to go to plugins in IntelliJ and then install, uh, install and find the KTOR plugin. I'll just do that just so you can see where it is. Control L S for settings in IntelliJ if you're using Ubuntu. Then we go here to plugins and then search for the cater, just write cater. If you don't get this, then you would actually have an opportunity to install it from the marketplace. There will be a link right here. And then you can just press the install and then you need to have to restart um, IntelliJ afterwards. Um, after doing that, then uh, when you create a new project by pressing File New Project like this, then we can then we get this option right here, Ktor. If you don't have this uh, this the, this option, then it's because you have not uh, installed the Ktor plugin yet. Um, but, but by pressing this, then I can choose uh, all the features uh, that I need. First of all, I want to use Gradle. That's uh, default. I want to use Netty. Um, you can choose yourself if you want to use Netty, Yeti, or Tomcat. Do not use CIO. That is coroutines, input, output. It is not done yet. Uh, there are bugs in it. So um, yeah, only use that if you want to see what, what, what they are up to, the, the Kato guys and girls. So um, another thing, I did not tick off any templating uh, because we don't need that tonight. Then I ticked off locations. That's very important. It makes it much easier to extract query uh, parameters and also path variables. Then I ticked off routing. It's like it's, like, it's actually already ticked off. Um, and then I chose JSON constant negotiation. That is so we can return an, uh, a class object instead, and then it, it will be automatically uh, converted into JSON. We can also return a map. Then it will also be converted into JSON. Um, you can choose uh, Jackson if you're more familiar with that. Uh, I, I didn't need any HTTP client for tonight's uh, demo, so I didn't take off the, any of those. I did not need any authentication, etc., so I did not take any of, uh, of those off. Uh, let me just show you the build.gradle file, uh, just to show you which line is important. Uh, when you take off the, uh, the locations, then you get this line right here. So that's how you can see if you have locations installed or added. Uh, and you all, we also uh, we actually don't need the JSON for tonight's demo, but I have added it anyway. If suddenly I, I felt like uh, returning an object instead of a text piece of text, um, then I went to application.kt and then I cleaned uh, uh, then I cleaned up a lot. So I deleted all the stuff that I didn't need, and then I ended up with having a routing uh, a routine right here. And I had just have one get. This is one get endpoint right here with this path that we have right here. And then I'm just returning hello world that it was just I have something to start up on so then I can see that my server is running as, as expected. Then I installed content negotiation, negotiation right here that this is default. Uh, I have not written this code. It was just added because I ticked off uh, JSON. And this is the important part tonight. Install locations right here. But first of all, um, let me create a new endpoint down here. Get and then we can figure then we can make up something new. It could be, um, what should it be? We can query for spaceships, maybe, spaceships. And then usually we would get a list of spaceships, but uh, tonight I'm just going to respond to some text. Respond text. Text like this, and then we say uh, ship one, two, and three. So that's what we got returned from our query, right? Uh, another thing then, yeah, let us just see if this actually works. So we've created this, and then I then we need to run the program. The program is up right up here. If you're not used to cutting cater, then this is the line that actually starts up the engine, the server. And this is because I, I ticked off Netty, then it will be the Netty engine uh, main that we are executing right here. If you choose Jetty, then it will just be Jetty instead. And if you choose Tomcat, then it will just be a Tomcat uh, class you will see right here and uh, method. Uh, let us, uh, yeah, but let us run the program. I can just press right here, run. Then it starts up. 
as you can see, it is very fast. So we are, we've already started up. I have tried. Uh, I, I did some um, I did some stuff just before starting this video here. So I will just write spaceships like this. So now we get the new. Uh, so this is the response ship one, two, and three. But let us say that uh, I actually had some path variables. I uh, maybe I had uh, the number ten. So first, uh, first uh, I wanted to, to give an ID that could be right, and then <coughs> furthermore, I also had some query uh, parameters, like I, maybe I had a, a filter. I want just want a filter. I want only want the blue spaceships like this, um, and or maybe I also added some paging. I just want page uh, five four. Oh yeah, okay, let's put uh, page four, and then I want a size page size um, of. The tin. So that could, uh, these 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 are named. These are called query parameters. The the ones after the question mark, and the ones in the path. These are called path variables. So uh, query parameters and path variables. And now I would like to get all of these out. And first we will do it the old-fashioned way, because right now nothing happens. If I do this, then actually I would not get a match, and that is because we are only matching on spaceships uh, exactly. So if I add spaceships and then um, an argument here that could be ID. That could be an ID if uh, if it's if it's a bunch of spaceships and I have the ID of this list right here. Um, then uh, another thing I could add would be the um, yeah. Then then I could get it. Then I could actually extract this uh, by using call, and then I can say parameters, and then I could write uh, ID like this. Then I could get my ID. And then I just set this to a local variable. Uh, introduce new local variable. Yes, thank you very much. ID. And then I can also return the ID here. And I'll say, and the ID of the list is, and then a dollar, and then ID like this. This is a cool thing about uh, strings in Kotlin. You can just add. Um, Dollar, and then you can add some code. If you want to have, if you want to have more than uh, just the variable, like maybe you have a method to call, then you need to have uh, curly brackets around it instead. Uh, let us just restart the server right here. Hmm. Let us see what happens. The server has been restarted. Almost, 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 almost. Here it is. Ship one, two, three, and the ID of the list is ten. Yes, let us try to change it to L to twelve instead. Let's see what happens then. Yeah, then it says twelve. So now we got the path variables, but what about the query variables? We did not get those yet. I can get those by accessing the call and then request. On the request, I can get all all the stuff the, that that are that all the things that are on the, on the request. That means I can also get the headers and get cookies. Uh, yeah, uh, but this time I want the query parameters, and then I can call for each. And this actually, uh, it takes uh, a lambda. So this for each right here, takes a uh, lambda like this. That means that then I need to write something like, uh, we have a string, so this is the string. And then we have the list right here. And then we have the uh, method of the for each right here. And then we can say print line. And then we can say a key dollar s and then value dollar values the reason why it's a list is because we can actually have multiple uh, keys with the same name in our query uh, parameters i'll just show you this in just a minute so we have list right here now we need to set the types of these so we say this is a, a string and this is a list of objects so this little, it could also be strings maybe string and let me just check something right here. So I, I don't need the I don't need the parentheses for like this. Let me just remove those. So now it looks fine. So now I'm, I'm actually just taking all the query parameters and then I'm printing them out. Of course, I could also have picked out one of the uh, query uh, arguments, uh, query parameters, like this, and then I could say, um, also say get by name. 
I could also use the 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 squared brackets instead, and then I can say get, and then we can say what should be page size, and then I could set that to a new local variable, and then we'll say page size, page size like this, and I can say and the page size, page size is dollar, and then uh, page size. Let us just restart and um, see what happens now. So it is up and running again. Let us just hit press enter. And the page size is 10. Let us try to change that to 30 instead. Enter. So the, the, the list of the ID of this is 12 and the page size is 30. Of course, this is not that difficult actually. So it, it's, it's, it's actually quite simple to get the, all these, uh, all these uh, the, the path variable and also the query parameters, but there is an even easier way actually. And that is called location. That means that I can actually create a new class. I could just create the class in the same, uh, in the same file if that's what I want to do. But uh, let me just create a new uh, file just uh, because I like to organize it in different files. And then I create a new Kotlin, new class right here. And then we can say this is my uh, space spaceship uh, location. And you don't need to name it location. It's just, again, it's just me who named it a spaceship location. And it could be a data class. And then we need to annotate this with a location. Location. Like this. And then we need to give it a location. So this location that could be, uh, uh, what should we call this? Other. Uh, spaceship, other spaceship, and then may maybe this could give us some. Yeah, there, there, there could be some other information. Then we can have a path variable that could be the ID of the spaceship, right? And then um, could also maybe have something else in the path variable that could be uh, uh, yeah, details. And then we can have something else like this details. And then we can say so we have the ID, and maybe we want the Maybe we also want somebody only on this um, captain. So we're also adding the captain as a path variable. Of course, the ID should actually be enough. So, but okay, let us then write. Yeah, let us keep the ID and the captain. It's a bad, it's, it's a bad logical example. I know that, but uh, bear bear with me. So then we have um, then we have val ID, which is an integer. Int, and then we have the captain well uh, the captain and that is a string and now if i add something else then that will be considered query uh, parameters so if i add something which is not up here that i could actually add something like uh, yeah the page again the page is a good example so i have page number so this is the page number that i want and then we have the uh, the page size, maybe we, I'm getting uh, uh, 10 spaceships at a time or something like that. Then I set that here right here, integer, page size, and then uh, and then we could have some kind of message, message, um, and that could be a string. Uh, and if these types do not match, then uh, then, uh, we will, uh, then the endpoint will not match either. But let us stop right here. So other spaceship ID details, Captain. Okay, so... The, now I actually take the spaceship location right here. Now we need to we need to remember the class or copy it. Then I can go over right here to my routing section and now I create a new. I'll create a new endpoint right here. Get and then instead of giving the path and all that as we usually do, then I just add the spaceship location like this. This is the class right there. And here we have the code then for for, for this example right here. Yeah, hello. Uh, I actually had to create a new project because I ruined the other project somehow, and I still do not know uh, how I ruined the other pro project, the other KTO project that I created. Um, but I created a new project, and there was no problem with the with the location uh, here. Uh, of course, uh, this time I created I created it with Tomcat just to try something different, um, and that's actually it. I also chose the accent instead, but that should not uh, do any difference. So I ruined the other project, and I don't know, not, I don't know how. I'll dig into this afterwards. I, I promise you that. But what I did here in the new project, which is now named uh, Prepare, prepare uh, Two instead of Prepare One, 
was that I have the installation. Uh, I, I'm, I'm installing the locations right here. And then I created a location right here, which is named Spaceship. And then I, I, I set this uh, location right here to Spaceship. And then the uh, path variable Captain. And then Details. And then Type like this. And then I added uh, then I added two query parameters. That means the page size and the page. And these are not uh, optional, actually. These are mandatory. They need to be there, or else the endpoint will not... Uh, yeah, will not be be um, be matched. So, so now, so now this is actually a location. I could have named this a spaceship location, but now I just named it spaceship. That means that now we need to give this. Um, yeah, first, first, first we need to activate it and set it in the gets. Need to configure it here in the routing section, and I did that right here. Gets and then the 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 pointy brackets right there, and then I say call respond, and then this is my spaceship, and then it's dot uh, dot caption. And then I could also write uh, type uh, should be, and then uh, dollar uh, uh, it dot type this time, and we just need the co co completion to uh, uh, to be done, and then we could say create a new line right there, and then we could say um, page equals. And page size equals, and then we could say here we have the the page size like this. Let's see if this works actually. So I'm going to restart the application. I'm very sorry. Um, yeah, that's what happens sometimes when you're making uh, demos. Okay, so now it's uh, now it starts. Yeah, that's fine. And now I'm running it like here. You can see we have spaceship right there. Then we have Mike as the captain. Then I'm writing details and I'm writing round as the type. And here comes my query. Uh, here comes my curve variables. It's a question mark. Let me just go back. Uh, it is a question mark right there. Page equals two. Page size equals ten. And I get all this information right here. So that's how locations work. Um, it is really really cool. There's something called uh, sub sub locations and sub routes, uh, and that that actually means that inside our spaceship, we can um, we could actually add some other some more classes in here. We could add another class, uh, and we could annotate this with location also like this. And then I could say this should be. Uh, let me simplify this a little bit. So we just have captain right here. Then I, I just have captain right here. I'm just deleting a little bit here so we can so it's a better example. And then inside here, then we could have uh, details, details, and then we could have uh, data class spaceship uh, details or just details, details like this. And here we would have uh, no. Yeah, let us also have a variable right here. Details and then we could have details. Uh, yeah, the level of how detailed it should be, right? So then we have the level right there, and that could be an a string. And then we can have another. So that means then we could have another uh, another class inside here, and that could be instead of details, that then it could be uh, fuel, can fuel left or something like that. And the fuel could be maybe we could have a tank number because maybe we have multiple uh, fuel tanks. And here we have the tank number, and that could also be a string. It could also be an integer. Now let's make it an integer. So, and then we say fuel, and then we need to set this up in the configuration part. We can do that right here. Of course, now, now these are not known, so I'll just delete those because we simplified the example. So let us delete that part. So here we have the captain. Yes, 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 that's fine. And uh, let me duplicate this section right here. So then we have spaceship and then I can write dots. Because now it's uh, now we have uh, now we have data classes inside data classes. So that means in the inner class and I can create then I can write spaceship dots uh, details first and then I can write uh, 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 spaceship details like this. And then I can use the other uh, arguments from the level right there. If I want to use the spaceship, um, the spaceship variables also, then I can also do that. If I add the 
Um, the spaceship as a type right here that I need to add. That's right there. That means spaceship. Colon. A spaceship like this. That means that then I will get all the all the variables from up here. I will also and and the type right here. This this data class right here will be accessible also in this uh, in this uh, path that we have right here. Let me just in, add, add that also right here. Spaceship like this. So we have we have level and tank number. And that means that then I can uh, I can actually take. Um, then I would have to say um, it dot spaceship. You see now I both have level and spaceship right here. So now I have level. I could also say spaceship. Then that means I can use it right here. It dot spaceship dot something from the spaceship. What was that? There was a captain. So now we have the captain right there. So there's the details. Let me just duplicate this once again. And this time we want the fuel level, fuel right there. And then we can say, give me the it.tank number instead, and still the uh, fuel tank, fuel tank. Let's try to play with this instead. So I'll just restart. So, this is a yeah. This is a good way for actually for organizing your endpoints. If you have uh, some kind of master endpoint right there, and then you have some sub endpoints and sub routes right here. The ITIL name sub sub routes. That's the right th uh, term for this. Um, yeah. So now it's up and running. First of all, let me just see if I can remember spaceship, captain, and details and fuel. Okay. Two captain. To a spaceship captain, Mike still, and then we can have the fuel. And then we can have a tank number, which could be 45. Uh, space here, fuel tank 45, and Mike is the captain. Yes, thank you very much. Then we could take the details. And what was the details? What was it? Details in the level and high level. Spaceship details, high level Mike. So it works, as you can see. Um, I, I don't know what went wrong in the first project. Uh, maybe I'll never find out. Um, and uh, feel free to comment. Feel free to leave me a comment if you if you know what actually went wrong in the first demonstration. Um, but that's it for tonight. I hope you got something out of it. And um, yeah, I hope you have a great evening. And I hope to see you again soon. Bye bye.